So what do Madonna, Olivia Newton-John, and Diana Ross have in common? Aside from being amazing singers, they got hauled recently. That's right. I usually start off my hauls with the books, but I'm excited about some new vinyl that we got. So I'm going to share it. As usual, whenever I do these hauls, I let you know. I'm not sharing everything that I've gotten since the last time I recorded one of these. Just highlighting a few fun things um, I mentioned in my blessings video, which may or may not have gone out yet, that I um, recently went on a date with my husband and we bought some toys. So I'll be including that too. But let's go ahead and start with the vinyl. Before I get into the wonderful ladies I just mentioned, I do want to show you a different um, piece of vinyl that we got. Let me see if I can get this right. Um, oh my goodness, of course I can't. Oh, that, yes. Here we go. This is Beach Bunny. So this is a uh, pop group that I forget how we discovered them, but we thought they were pretty cool. So we we got their, their vinyl record and it came with these really cute stickers. And so um, that's just something we picked up recently. You know, if you're not into pop music and stuff like that, no, no worries, but I just like to share stuff. So again, I mentioned Madonna, Diana Ross and Olivia Newton-John because we recently hauled them. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of Olivia, of Olivia Newton-John. Um, from back in the day in the 80s um, when she was a pop star she did physical and she did grease and all that kind of stuff and um, Xanadu I had her Xanadu on vinyl already and then she became a country singer as well and I'm not a huge country um, fan but I don't like dislike it it's just probably not my favorite genre um, but still um, I've liked her voice and I've heard some of her country songs and I thought they were pretty good Regardless, um, she recently passed away and I was like, you know what, we should probably just go out and get some more of her stuff to add to our collection. And so we just picked up um, one of her records and there she is, classic Olivia. And um, haven't listened to this one yet. Um, I um, <laughs> am waiting to just have like a peaceful, quiet day where I don't have a whole lot going on to do that, but i um, very excited about it. And then um, they were having a sale on um, Madonna's Ray of Light from, I think this is her early 2000s that she did. Um, I have to open it up to look at it anyway. Um, again, we're not huge Madonna fans, but of course we don't dislike her. I mean, it's just, we just didn't have her on vinyl. We're like, we should probably get some of her on vinyl. So we got this one. Um, and then this one, we didn't have to get this one, but we had to get it. I mean, so I don't, I don't know what your perception of Diana Ross is, but I have two thoughts that come to mind when I think of Diana Ross. Obviously the Supremes, Baby Love, and all those songs from way back in the day. That's like the classic Diana. But Diana also had a lot of hits in like the 70s and early 80s. Her songs have been sampled by a lot of hip hop artists. You know, she's like, she's relevant. Um, with that said, her public appearances to me have always been kind of like crazy out there. Like, um, like Michael Jackson, Liza Minnelli, Diana Ross. Like when these people get together and it's like, whoa, <laughs> it's, it's, it's surreal. It's crazy. And so I remember my Rudolph used to um, do her impersona impersonation of her on SNL. She had like this big hair and she would just be like kind of shaking her hands. Or, and, and that is like <laughs> what I think of when I think of Diana Ross, even though I know her from like, you know, the stuff back in the day and even um, the Wiz, you know, he's on down the road, like. There's, there's more than one Diana Ross, but I just had that kind of image stilled into my brain until we saw this record and we had to get it. Isn't, she looks so just like classic and simple and beautiful to match that amazing voice that she has. It's not wild and wild and crazy, you know? And so of course, when you open it up, we do have that classic Diana Ross image on the inside of it, but um. This is the one that gets sampled so much. This is the one that has the, um, what is it? The um, round and round, you turn and me turn, you know, like anyway. So I had to pick that up. 
that's the vinyl. And again, I, we've, we've acquired more vinyl since the last time I recorded one of these, but that's what I felt sharing. Let's talk about the toys. So like I said, I recently went on the hubs and we got some new toys. I'm not going to be sharing his toys, just the ones that I got, but he got some to add to his collection. Um, so I have been wanting this particular toy for a long time. They don't make a whole lot of them because he's a comic book character that is not like a super popular character. And so um, on the mainstream, those people who probably never even heard of his character. And looking at the box, I realized that they don't use his original character name on the box, but I don't care. I'm going to call him by his original character name. <laughs> so um, let me just show you and I'll explain. So this is the demon, as they call him, but this is the demon Etrican. And Etrican is a character who... Um, started out as a man there was a curse involved and he used to chant this thing where he would say gone is the form of man gone the form of etrigan and so he would go from a man to this demon who had to fight for good whether he kind of wanted to or not at one point like his story has changed or whatever so anyway this is a um um this is part of the mcfarlane collection so all of his toys are super detailed um, I, me and my husband are the kind of the collectors that we don't have a problem necessarily taking things out of the box from time to time, but this is one of the ones that we will probably keep in the box just because he is so detailed. Like, I mean, I would have to take him out of the box to show you that. And that's not the kind of channel this is, but this is just me geeking out on the fact that I actually found it because it's not, like I said, the most popular toy. So it's not like I can just go into any Target or Walmart and find this toy. So I was very excited to get um, an extra kitten. So um, two other cool toys that I picked up recently. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's anything about me as a geek that people find shocking anymore <laughs> now that they know that I am a geek girl. But um, there's a series called The Superhero Girls that's out. And um, I really like it. It's cute. And um, so the characters that I'm about to show you is from that, but she's also in some other DC iterations or whatever. This one is from, I think the DC superhero girl like movie series. Like there's a cartoon series and there's a movie series. They're a little bit younger in the cartoon series. And then I say cartoon series as like a sitcom, they're all animated. So that might be confusing <laughs> regardless. Um, this is not the, the, the younger one. This is the older one. This is Bumblebee. So this is Bumblebee on her stand, looking all fierce with her wings. They had some other Bumblebees, but she had like real hair that was like matted and like her wings didn't look great. And so this is her in all her glory. And she, even though she's Bumblebee, she is a DC character and she matches my office perfectly, which is black and white before my, you know, whole Batman theme. She fits right in because she's DC and she's black and white. So yay, Bumblebee. Now, the other um, toy that I got, uh, she's another one that normally I wouldn't mind taking out of the box, but she's gonna stay in the box because when I when I show it to her, maybe you'll get it. She's a, another McFarlane toy, um, very highly detailed. And they actually had two of them. So let's go back to the original um, Batman television series back in the 60s and you know it was like the zany hip or whatever, whatever the term is I forget they use for stuff from the 60s and so uh, originally the Catwoman on that show was black and then they switched her up and replaced her with the uh, other actress which I can't remember her name I absolutely loved her as Catwoman so I'm not hating on her in the slightest but a lot of people forget that originally the Catwoman that they introduced was Eartha Kitt and she got replaced by the other actress who I feel terrible right now that I cannot remember her name. I might remember to look it up and edit it into the video, but she's great. I'm not hating on her in the slightest. And they had both of them side by side. And I was like, which one do I get? I can only get one. So of course I got her the kit and she's actually hanging on my wall. Let me just get her off and show her to you. And so there she is, Eartha Kid Catwoman, and she's going to stay in the box, and I'm just going to look at her because she's beautiful. And yeah, I know, I'm a grown woman. This is me, guys. Accept me. Love me. This is who I am. So let me put her back on the wall. 
and we're going to get into some books because, you know, my channel is mostly about books. So I don't have a lot of books to share with you guys today. Um, just again, life. Of course, I've acquired lots of books, but I'm not going to go back and pull all those books out. They're just that's not how long I like to make my videos. So <laughs> these are the most recent ones. Um, and I, this one, I may have shown you already. I don't, I don't know, but basically, um, a Kickstarter that I had supported two years ago, I got the digital comics and I really liked them. And so when they relaunched to submit, um, to release the seek the following issue, they were like, you can get the print and the, um, you can get the the first installment and the second installment in print for the same price. So I was like, why not? And so this is Changa and the Jade Obelisk number one. And then I also got number two. So I got both of the print editions for that amazing series. And again, love all of the black beautifulness. Um, despite that, they are just amazing, really good like comic book stories. And I get it, not comic book stories aren't for everybody and that's okay, but they're my jam. So um, another Kickstarter that I supported, um, a group of creators who did a podcast series, um, eventually came together and released a picture book. Let's see. The Adventures of Nakoa and Nahia, Shadows of the Ancient. And so this is based on, and I know I'm probably saying this all wrong, but like Polynesian culture and Asian culture and island culture, um, all of those intertwining um, things here. Um, people with, you know, brown skin, yellow skin, red skin, all the different um, ethnicity mixing together. And it's just a really beautiful, I wanted to find one page to show you. And I think this page of the kids is the page to show you. So here we go. There we go. There's the kids in the picture book I didn't want to show you the other page but anyway so this was one that I recently got in the mail and I'm really excited about so that's that let's see and I think the last thing that I'm going to share is a t-shirt that I have um if you saw my short about the vibe story exchange I you know had written a story and presented it and I was selected and did a collaboration with an artist and we did our presentation and all that jazz and we were wearing t-shirts that she had designed based on the inspiration of the story that I wrote it was a really great collaboration and I hope that she and I will work on something again so um I wrote a story called Miracle Before Daybreak and she read it and was inspired and created this work of art and then she took that work of art and turned it into a t-shirt design. It's not the exact same. Like I have a print of the work of art that I'm going to show you guys on, in another video another time. But it's like hanging on our wall. And from that, she inspired a t-shirt design that she came up with. And we were wearing them if you saw them in that video. And so anyway, I just wanted to show, show you here the design that she came up with. So this t-shirt design, it says um, resistance is fertile is based off the actual artwork that she created, which is based off the story that I wrote. And so anyway, just wanted to share that with you. This is some of the stuff that I've acquired lately. I'm always acquiring stuff that is just part of the consumer nature of, you know, living in a middle-class world. Um, <clears throat> I do try to be socially conscious about certain things, but um, these are some of the things that bring me comfort. So I would love to know what you guys think of some of the things I've recently gotten. And um, I'd love to hear about some of the things that you've gotten. And if you haven't gotten anything, that's no big deal. We don't need to be collecting stuff all the time anyway. <laughs> so that's why I don't do these videos all the time. Regardless, I really like some of the cool stuff that I've gotten. And I hope you did too. Guys, stay safe. Be blessed. See you next time. So what do Madonna, Olivia Newton-John, John, 